This is a special edition today because we have a financial man discussing agriculture matters. Welcome, Johan van Seyl, CEO of Sunlam, which is of course South Africa and Africa's biggest locally headquartered insurance company. Now today, we discuss the role of agriculture as a catalyst for economic growth in Africa. The continent boasts some 60% of the world's most arable land and yet probably has its hungriest people. With agriculture, Africa may well be able to mobilize investment, catalyze its infrastructure rollout, and deploy technology. Johan, I've been waiting for this for a very long time. It's all nice to be here. I just wanted to give a bit of context because people will be wondering. Johan, talking agriculture, those who don't know you at least. Johan, you have worked within agriculture for quite a long time. You were at the World Bank Warrior Coordinator for Rural Development. You've been a lecturer. You actually have a PhD in agricultural economics. I wonder how many people know about that. But they will know you now today as we go through this discussion. Let's begin, perhaps, by looking overall. I want us to take a helicopter view of the agricultural opportunity in Africa. Everybody speaks about it these days. They talk about the fact that that stat that I just rolled out about Africa having 60% of the world's most arable land. And also, of course, I mentioned the fact that we've got also perhaps the most hungry people on earth, and yet we have got mm. this resource. Sketch for us, if you will, what it looks like when you look as an investor, as an agronomist, as an African. Well, it's true. We have tremendous potential uh, in natural resources. We have the land, but uh, Godfrey, land is but one issue. Uh, <coughs> you know, we need a whole environment that supports agricultural production. So you have the, you need inputs, you need the land, you need water, then you need the whole marketing infrastructure, you need general infrastructure to be able to do things. And you also need policies that right. are conducive. And, uh, you know, all these things are necessary. And if one of them are lacking, you don't get really agriculture to take off and grow and be the engine that we would like it to be and where that it was for many countries that we see in Asia yeah. and, and also in uh, South America yeah. uh, a few years ago. Now, you have written extensively about agriculture in Africa and in other parts of the continent. Give us, if you will, where Africa sits at the moment in respect to getting it right, to creating the conditions to make sure that Africa is actually able to catalyze and harness the opportunity that is there now. Well, for many years, we didn't do the right stuff, yeah. uh, particularly on the policy side. We didn't uh, do things. We weren't focused. We were all over the show. And in fact, uh, many politicians and, you know, aspire to getting the people off the land. Yeah. Uh, into Why? In, into cities and so forth. Uh, because it's easier agriculture, to manage them and control yes, agri them. yes, that's the one part. But agriculture was always seen as backward. I mean, uh, you you can't make a living. Today we know better. I mean, agriculture is a is a high highly intensive business. Mm. It can provide m massive job creation, and in 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 many cases, it can be the engine, you know, uh, getting the economy to grow. Yeah. And if you really look at the pool of resources in Africa, you know, we we well endowed with. Uh, uh, you know, all sorts of minerals and, and metals and so forth. Yeah. But agriculture is really the mainstay of many of the economies. So it's important that we get it to work. What's your sense? How far are we from being able to fully exploit this? Of course, Africa has 54 countries. Yes. So I'm asking for a general view. Well, the general view is we still still some way off. Uh, some, but we've made tremendous headway, I think, over the past number of years. Yeah. Markets have been liberalized. We see the infrastructure going, we see general growth going in, mm. and we see markets developing. And these things are all, as I've said, a critical component to get you know, the land yeah. to be productive. And so yeah. on. Now, the further we are, of course, that means the greater the opportunity to yes. get that right. Yes. Now, when you look at the overall policy framework, and I want to us to be able to break it down in terms of regions or, if need be, come down into countries that are perhaps further ahead in terms of uh, creating those conditions than the others. Mm -hmm. How far are we, would you say? No, we, we're still a way off. I mean, for agriculture to work, there's a whole lot. We, we have to have the inputs, uh, you know, working. We have to have the education, the training, the extension services to work. We have markets to work. But prices in these things are often politically influenced. Mm. And, you know, people want prices to be low. If yeah. a price is low, people do less of it. True. And uh, while the general thinking is, you know, of the unsophisticated, 
and often also at the political level, if that agricultural prices are low, people are better off. Right. In fact, people just stop producing. True. So you're often better off by having higher prices, but people produce more. And you really have to look at that response. What is the, the supply response to agriculture? And we know in the, in the old days we would said agriculture is unresponsive. We know better now yeah, that, yeah. that you, know, you get capital coming in from sources that you never thought. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we look at Africa, where we uh, have uh, involved in 14, 15 countries. Right. And each and every one of those countries, you know, insurance <coughs> companies mm -hmm. ourselves start investing right. in agricultural activities, in processing, in input supply, yeah. in infrastructure. These are the kinds of things I think that are absolutely necessary. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in detail in the second half. But I wanted, first of all, just to, to sp still speak about this policy framework. Now, what do you fix first? Do you fix first the policy framework or do you fix first the markets that people need to do, where do you start? Well, it starts with the policies. The policy is the, like the referee. Right. I mean, uh, and that's often easier to fix yeah. than the physical stuff that takes a longer time. Until or you start talking to yes. politicians. Yes. But, you know, many of them start to see the light. And if you really look at what has happened in the past 10 years, like we've seen in other sectors, yeah. Africa has been wakening up and we've had massive movement in the right direction. Yeah. So the policies are becoming much more conducive. And we often see external forces driving it. Mm. It's not, you know, the Africans or so, but we see forces where, you know, people are food insecure in China increasingly yeah. and in Asia looking forward for the next 50 years, what will happen? And the big fight there is, they will see, is, is food. Yeah. So they're, they're, they already start those investments now. Yeah. Now, of course, politics and food are inextricably linked. But I want you for a moment to take off your sunlam hat and talk as an economist, the agricultural economist that you are. Um, if you were to advise African governments on what they need to get right, right now, to create the opportunity for agriculture to take off, Please yes. give me, I don't know how many points you can. What the big, needs to the be biggest done thing in today, order of importance? The, the biggest thing today, agriculture is still being a negative contributor to, to taxation. It is being taxed. So it pays bigger taxes than what it provides because it's simply one of the main sectors. Mm -hmm. That by itself lowers the incentives to get involved and to invest in agriculture. And we've seen worldwide, not only in Africa, as long as that is the case, either through trying to make cheap, and I call that a tax as well, yeah. uh, you know, uh, getting prices depressed, making food cheap and things like that, yeah. but also from uh, ex ex extracting physical taxes from what you do over there. As long as that regime is in place, you don't get development and you don't get investment. Right. And in some countries, and in fact, at this stage, it is still a net payer of tax. Uh, relative to what it receives. So tax? Tax. Okay. Well, tax uh, is a broad term. I yeah. not only say the tax it's the tax regime. Pay, the whole tax regime, the, you know, a net uh, a payer in, 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 in the context, instead of a being neutral or yeah. a general receiver. You know, we've seen other countries that used agriculture as a... Europe. Yes, that used agriculture as a, as a sort of a vehicle to grow, yeah. and particularly in some of the Asian economies before they became industrialized. Okay. Uh, the precursor to industrialization was investing in agriculture and so forth. And therefore, using it as a vehicle so that you rather get it to grow yeah. instead of stifling the growth. So it's vitally critical that this is gotten right because yes. everybody's talking about Africa now industrializing and we've had governments beginning to talk about trying to make sure that they put the right policies so they're actually able to industrialize and beneficiate. Yes. So this yeah. has to be fixed right now. Yes, and agriculture is often a big source of that industrialization. Yeah. I yeah. think, you know, if you think... It's not the agricultural production per se, but the agro-processing, yeah. which is a massive opportunity. <coughs> and it takes the opportunities out of the cities, often to back with who the people are, and we the biggest, you know, uh, uh, concentrations of people are yeah. in, into the rural areas where there's very little else and, and other opportunities. Yeah. So we, we, told, we spoke t tax reform. What else do they need to look at? 
Well, the, the other thing is simply infrastructure. I mean, agriculture is bulky, and there's always transport involved. So you, yeah. need, ro you need proper roads. Mm -hmm. You need input availability, mm -hmm. mainly fertilizers and machinery. Yeah. And then you need markets. Uh, the markets are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, increasingly in Africa, people are being urbanized. Yeah. That by itself creates massive market. markets. Uh, often we import stuff from elsewhere into those markets where a lot of opportunity are to simply produce yeah. uh, quite close by. I remember reading a figure of more than $40 billion of food actually that's imported into Africa every single year. So that's a big uh, yes. source of foreign exchange yes. uh, drain as well, yes. uh, apart from uh, you know it being uh, costly. Un unfortunately, a lot of the, the aid into Africa, and you yeah. know, I've been with the World Bank for a while and looking at some of those things, uh, a lot of the aid into Africa comes in the form of food. Yeah. Which people think is, is a gift, and in the short term it is, yeah. but in the longer term it's you're a poison pill. You're incapacitating people. Yes, you, you're simply taking away the opportunity from your own industry. When you look around the continent, who's getting it right? Well, increasingly uh, the people with the biggest potential are getting it right. I think uh, countries like Tanzania, uh, Zambia recently have made uh, uh, big strides right. uh, towards you know, progress. Yeah, I, I know you'll find it difficult to then say who's not making progress, but I think in our minds we know who's not making progress and why they are going backwards. Now, let's talk about the politics of the food, the stomach and politics. We know that politicians like to keep control of prices because they're scared about food security. They're scared prices yes. will make people turn against them. Yes. How do we get it right? How do we get that balance right between providing food security while at the same time making sure that food does not become a weapon with which to beat politicians? Well, the issue is, of course, you, you <laughs> if the prices are too low, people don't produce it. If prices rise, people can't afford it. So food security is having that, that middle ground. And it's different for each country. And you have mm -hmm. to look at, it's also different for cities and from rural areas because you have to, to, to move the food around. There is no single recipe there. There mm -hmm. is no single recipe. But, but the point is, and, and that is very clear, yeah. we see people can take a lot of abuse from governments and from politicians. But yeah. governments change if people go hungry, if they don't have access to food. That's really when they vote, and often you get the violent overthrows of government and so yeah. on. So it is important. And to I simply ignore it and to say there's a, sim a simple recipe, it isn't there. 